Jennings so warmly. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I'd like to introduce the Honorable Mayor Pedro Cigar for the State of the City Address. Thank you. Council President, members of the City Council, friends and colleagues that are here, and to those of you that are watching or listening, thank you for the opportunity to develop and present to you the State of the City. To my husband, Charlie, thank you for your unwavering support, abundance of patience, and all that you do to beautify our city parks and streets. <laughs> to all of our city employees, I want to thank you for your hard work, for your hard work under incredible and enormous challenges, most especially our DPW employees as they were faced with a record number of storms this winter. Y para la comunidad hispana, hoy vamos a estar hablando también en nuestro idioma. <laughs> Today, I intend to speak to you candidly. I want to speak candidly to the men and women and the young people of Hartford. Today, I will provide a clear vision of how we will drive ahead. We have been on an incredible journey that has presented many, many incredible challenges. Four years ago, we were in the middle of one of the worst economic periods in America. In Hartford, we were literally in crisis. Many people couldn't see the way out. No one bailed us out. No one came to our rescue. Instead, we tapped into our best qualities to create solutions. The pride of our hardworking people, the imagination of our entrepreneurs, and the wisdom of our experts, and many of you in the community. Hartford, Hartford is a resilient city, and the results speak for themselves. Today, we see the following a rebounding housing market and lower vacancy rates, the lowest crime rates in years, a double-digit upgrade in our bond rating for the first time in over 10 years, UConn and the University of St. Joseph, Front Street, over 80 new businesses. A thriving arts community where for every $1 that we have invested, $13 came back in audience participation. An increase, an increase in business moving in and expanding here. And over 6 million visitors coming to Hartford every year. Think about, think about how far we've come. And I know that it's because we have stood together shoulder to shoulder that we have emerged with more jobs, more businesses, more people living here, and a renewed sense of pride and self-worth. I want to acknowledge small businesses like Professional Barbershop on Park Street, on Pratt Street, Scott's Jamaican Bakery, Hispana Vision, Comerieño, and the Brostrand on Park Street for their resilience. I want to acknowledge the Artist Collective, Peace Builders, the Chattero Cultural Center, the Open Hearth, the YMCA, and all the young people in our city who are challenging and pushing us to do things differently. I want to thank Salute, Dunn's River, Seven's Food, Trampoline Launch, Express Kitchen, and so many other businesses that are investing and expanding in our city. We've come a long way. We are ready. We are ready for the next step. 
It's going to be hard. We're going to have to put some of our political differences aside and do what's right for our city. What I want and what I know you want is for Hartford to be one of the best capital cities in America. Let me, let me say it again. I want Hartford to be one of the best capital cities in America. Ahora en español. Estamos listos para ser la mejor ciudad capitalina en todos los Estados Unidos. America's best capital cities are where people feel safe, where people can find jobs. The best capital cities attract entrepreneurs. They leverage technology and serve as the economic engine for the region. The best capital cities have a strong school system and educational institutions for all of its residents. America, America's best capital cities have a quality of life that you simply can't find in the suburbs, including nightlife, restaurants, arts, culture, and historic institutions known throughout the world. Hartford has a lot of this already. We just need to get better, and yes, we need to get out of our own way. To become, to become one of America's best capital cities, we have to focus on the fundamentals. Safety, jobs, education, and quality of life. We must, we must continue to make smart investments in people and not let fear or politics get in the way. Becoming one of America's best capital cities won't happen overnight. But as President Kennedy said, let us begin. So this state of the city will be different than the ones in previous years because I want you to know precisely where I stand, where your city stands, and how we can become one of America's best capital cities. Let us begin with the reality that binds us all together our budget. Since 2012, we have exercised restraint and prudence of our fiscal management. Each and every year, we have defeated deficits that seemed insurmountable. We held the line on spending because we understand that the burdens our taxpayers face. Our recent bond rating upgrade is a sign that, we have, that what we have done has helped our city. But it's getting hotter. We have to be prepared to make tough decisions. And if we are going to forge ahead, we have to point fingers at the solutions and not at each other. We'll have to work together to address the tax inequities that have historically hurt us while pursuing a policy that makes sense for our city. If we're going to be America's best capital city, people in our communities must feel safe. Crime and public safety are fundamental to our progress. This single issue affects everything from economic development to education to quality of life. And you know how I feel about it. Within my first year as mayor, we established the shooting task force. For communities to feel safe, it takes a number of things a compassionate, effective, and diverse police force. Streets that are well lit and clean, and a community that takes pride and responsibility in their own neighborhoods. I don't want to mince my words. The budget that I will submit will not compromise public safety. We cannot lose the momentum that we have gained in reducing crime. We have seen what happens when we don't commit sufficient resources to our police department. I am not willing to gamble with the lives of our residents, our young people, and neither should you. But a safe capital city requires all of us to do our part. Hartford Police cannot do it alone. City Hall cannot do it alone. Communities who are suffering, suffering cannot do it alone. 
Our success relies on our ability to work together. I want to acknowledge the members of our public safety, public safety teams that are here today, the Hartford Police Department and the Shooting Task Force. The Hartford Fire Department. And our veterans. Please stand for our veterans. These individuals put themselves in harm's way to protect those they serve. On behalf of all of us here, God bless you and thank you for your service. I want to acknowledge Hartford Police Chief James Rovella and Hartford Fire Chief Carlos Huertas. Thank you. Thank you for your courage, your intelligence, and your leadership. Hartford is a safer city today than when I became mayor, and it's due in part because these men and women have worked together and have worked well. Compared to 2009, shooting victims are down 40%. Homicides are down 32%. And our solvability of crimes is significantly increased and is well above the national average. But despite the successes that we've had and statistics that show the positive impact of our efforts, there's no denying that there is a lot more to be done. Here are a few of those things. We have to refine our community policing plan and accelerate the process of accreditation. Building trust between our residents and our police department is critical to keeping our streets safe. This means, this means expanding our police athletic league, our explorer programs, and our student internship programs so that we can create a pipeline of our community, our youth, into our police department. We need to engage our communities, especially our young, so that they understand that they too have a role to play in keeping their community safe. So that they build a relationship, a good one, with law enforcement and have a vested interest in preserving their communities. It takes a long time, it takes a long time to change perception. That, that is our true challenge. We have to continue professionalizing and diversifying our public safety teams, starting with improving our responses to 911 and 311 calls. I know the Hartford Police Department has been making a concerted effort to recruit diverse candidates for the new class of 40. They have reinstituted their recruitment team and are working with the city and the city council to present at community meetings across the city. Do we need to do a lot more? Yes. The legacy of the Singtarn case is something that we take, I take, very seriously. And if you have other ideas, share them. We're listening. We'll continue to modernize and incorporate technology with everything from ComStat to emergency communication to automated fingerprinting. And we will continue to improve our infrastructure, such as lighting our streets and fixing our sidewalks. The budget I will submit the budget that I will submit will reflect these priorities and seek resources for much needed repairs. If we all work on these issues in concert, we will be one of the safest cities in America. We know that crime is a complicated issue, which is impacted by education, economic opportunity, and most of all, employment. Fast money can certainly seem like a good option when you have no money. To tackle this reality, we have to be focused on a few areas. Continue investing in our own people, improving our business climate in order to attract new companies that will put people back to work, leveraging new projects and making it easier for businesses to come and stay in Hartford. Standard & Poor's bond rating upgrade last week is proof that we are on the right track. But we have to become more efficient at what we're doing. 
We recently overhauled our permitting process. A year ago, the chances of you walking into the licenses and inspections office and getting a permit the same day was 4%. Today, it is 52%. A year ago, the chances of you getting a permit within 30 days was 11%. Today, it is 84%. This type of efforts are critical in making sure that we accelerate the rate of growth and development in our city. But we have to take it a step further. This year, we're beginning to build out Hartford's first online permitting portal. This will allow businesses to apply, pay for, and track their permits on the web. As more and more people pay bills online, shop online, on their phones, City Hall has to keep up. It's as simple as that. The goal is to be paperless, which will reduce, will reduce the need for trips to City Hall and let businesses focus on more important things such as growing jobs and taking care of their customers. City government should feed innovation. We cannot be resistant to trying new things. The best capital cities attract entrepreneurs, innovators, and people with ambition. A great capital city is energetic, faster than the suburbs, and in keeping with new technology. Recently, Hartford was one of only three cities across the country to receive a very highly competitive grant from the Obama administration. The Stronger Cities, Stronger Communities grant is meant to trigger innovation in urban areas, and we decided to invest it back into the two most important resources that we have, our people and their ideas. We're asking people to submit their best ideas for creating a sustainable, long-term economic development in Hartford. We are turning to you to develop proposals that place us firmly within this new global economy. The city of Hartford will invest almost a million dollars to those groups who submit proposals. Whether the ideas are ways to attract manufacturers, to train or retrain our workforce, to create an inventor's laboratory, we want to hear them. You'll learn more about this in the next week, and I want to be clear that increasing efficiency, investing in people, and trying what we have not tried before is part of our strategy to drive economic development. When it comes to, they get it. <laughs> The reality is that Hartford has a disproportionate number of individuals who are not meeting the current qualifications of many of the jobs that are available. We have a lot of adults that have not completed high school, adults who have interacted with the criminal justice systems, and young mothers who are just entering the workforce. Good jobs are hard to come by anyway, but even more so with these type of challenges. A lot of our kids and adults need more than school. They need, as the president has said, ladders of opportunity. Ladders of opportunity that will help them overcome the unique obstacles that they face. To tackle this complicated issue, we will be increasing and strengthening resources for Opportunities Hartford, a program composed of several corporate, nonprofit, and government partners. One of our initiatives consists of a class of 65 young people who will be working towards their GED diplomas and learning industry skills in growth areas such as manufacturing and technology. So whether it's initiatives like Opportunities Hartford, whether it's aligning with our president's new program, Our Brothers Keepers, or My Brothers Keepers, or working with Governor Malloy to increase participation in the Step Up program, we are going to continue to establish partnerships in order to help the residents that need it the most. And I just want to note and applaud Governor's Malloy's plan to raise the minimum wage in our state. Our city has thousands of families who are barely making it. I know that a lot of you in here are my staff. You're allowed to clap as well. So whether it's incentives like Opportunities uh, Hartford, My Brother's Keepers, we want to increase participation in these programs. Here are a couple of more things that we're doing. We're leveraging some of our major projects so that Hartford residents can benefit directly. 
We launched and assisted dozens of new developments this year, including Downtown North, 777 Main, Yukon, Coltsville, and sidewalk improvement projects, just to name a few. All the construction projects were given mandates to hire Hartford residents, and we will be diligently monitoring and tracking compliance. We will be creating new housing programs to eliminate blight in our neighborhoods and help homeowners fix their housing. Only Hartford contractors will be used in this program. And as the work develops with city funds, we will require that the businesses selected are Hartford based and offer jobs to Hartford residents as much as possible. Hartford was recently honored in DC for the best summer youth employment program in the country. We raised over $2 million last year. I've expanded it to be becoming mayor because I believe in it. It provides our teenagers access to professional work, a chance to earn money, learn some responsibility, and I'm committed, it, I'm committed to growing it even further this year. The reality of shrinking budgets means that every dollar that we spend is to be an investment in our future. But if we continue investing in people, we cannot go wrong, and we will be one of America's best capital cities. We all agree that education is the solution to poverty and the path to upward mobility, and that better schools will attract and keep families in Hartford. We cannot have great schools without a great leader. By July 1st, we will have on board an outstanding superintendent who has a track record of success and a proven ability to engage students, parents, and other stakeholders. If we want a competitive workforce, education must begin as early as possible. The fact is that children who, attend, who attend early education programs are more likely to do well in school, find good jobs, and succeed in their careers than those who don't. Today, thanks to the leadership of Dr. Jose Colon Rivas, 70% of our preschoolers attend an early education program in Hartford. In 2019, I want that number to be 100%. In, align in alignment with our federal government and the governor's recommended budget, my budget will include a plan to make sure that all Hartford kids get the start that they need to succeed. Our plan is to have every, every single child in Hartford enrolled in early education programs in the, next, in the next five years. Choice is the hallmark of our school system, and we celebrate it. Every parent should have the ability to choose the right school for his or her child, and every child, every child is entitled to attend a great school. Choice has helped us close the achievement gap by one third, and choice will help us close it all the way. But our children cannot get the education they need if they do not attend school. Right now, one of every four students were chronically absent, meaning that they missed more than 18 days of school each year. In preschool, the numbers are higher. Children who are chronically absent in primary grades are unlikely to be reading at grade level, and high school students who are chronically absent are unlikely to graduate. This can change, and it must change, but only if we work together. City government and the Board of Education both have a role, as do social service providers and private philanthropy. We need to work with our parents, many of whom face, 
enormous, enormous daily struggles to make sure that their children get into school every day and on time. And we need to work with our teenagers to help them stay in school. In 2009, our graduation rate was 47%. Right now, 65% of our kids are graduating from high school. This is a huge improvement from where we started, but there's still a long way to go. Every Hartford child can and must graduate from high school. Be college ready and prepare for a career. If we fail to meet this obligation, we compromise not only the life of that child, but we compromise the quality of life in all of our communities. This is the most important investment that we can make as a community. And like any investment, it will have a lasting impact on future generations for years to come. Last year, we established the Hartford Promise, a scholarship program that provides high school students with a B or better average and graduate up to $20,000 towards higher education costs. Many of our corporate partners stepped up and committed and I will be meeting personally with every single one of you to thank you on behalf of our city and our kids and to see how we can further collaborate more effectively to make college a reality for all of our kids. Now, we can create and develop effective policy. We can develop great schools, but we cannot read to our children at night. We cannot force them to attend class. In the end, there is no program or policy that replaces a mother, a father, or a caregiver that attends a parent-teacher conference or helps with the homework or takes away the cell phone or the video games and gets involved in their child education. The responsibility for our children's education also takes place at home. I want to, want to acknowledge 32 of our seniors at the Law and Government Academy and their teachers, Veronica Lee and Bridget Allison, who are here with us today. Please stand. And um, you, can, you can remain standing. You can remain standing because I said that today I was going to speak to the youth, and I'm speaking directly at the youth. And I want to look at you and tell you that, um, that I'm fighting for you. Your mayor is fighting for you. But I need you, I need you to stay the course. I need you to commit, and I need you to stay the course. Even when it gets hard, even when someone tells you no, or that you can't. We're here to help you. We're here to open doors for you. But you must walk through those doors yourselves. And to many of your parents who are here today, I want to tell them that their mayor is fighting for them as well. And that I believe in them. For the teenagers that are struggling, let me say directly to you that I was once one of you. I dropped out of school because I needed to get away from the violence that was taking over my neighborhood. I got here on a bus with little money and nowhere to go. I worked in Hartford during the day and took a bus all the way to New York City at night to finish my high school diploma. And I made it. 
I made it because I have ambition, but I stepped up because someone else believed in me and gave me the chance. I believe in you, and I know, I know, I'm convinced that you will be the next great generation of great leaders for the city. Thank you. Thank you. Not done yet. For us to be one of America's best capital cities, everyone's participation and support is required. And for that to happen, our citizens need to have faith in government. For the past two years, we've spent time with the recruitments of our boards and commissions and in training so that they can be true active partners. My priority this year is to provide Hartford residents the services that they expect. Efficient snow removal, clean parks, clean streets, timely garbage pickup, and yes, covered potholes. We will be focused heavily this year on our internal structure, starting with a rollout of a new 311 system. Oftentimes, these are the people with whom City Hall has their first interaction, and the folks that answer those phones should be problem solvers, not message takers. 311 was not providing the service our residents needed, so we are fixing it. We will focus on public spaces, which are oftentimes the first thing that people who come to the city of Hartford see. This year, Elizabeth Park won New England's Best Public Rose Garden Award, as well as an international award. And even our very own Hartford Public Library, who in 2009 had a fractured relationship with the city and faced the threat of closures, has now been nominated, not once, but two years in a row for the best library in the country. No other library, no other library has had that honor. So our public library is truly a place like no other. Our parks just don't serve the people of Hartford. They serve the region. They bring a lot of visitors and they serve as an economic driver for our city. So we have made them a priority. We have just signed a contract with the Professional Golfers Association to take over the management of our Goodwin Park golf course in conjunction and working with Knox Parks. And they will be open and ready for spring this year. A revitalization and restoration of Kinney Park is fully underway. Park rangers now patrol the park each day. Surveillance cameras have been added. DPW is clearing out the brush and litter to improve the views from the street. New signage will be added, and a wooden fence will be added as well. And the golf course is under repair and will be open next year. We're going to do our part, but we also need you to do yours. Hartford, Hartford is a great city to live in. There are more young professionals coming here because they know that. They do not want to live in the suburbs, but in the capital city, where there's nightlife, concerts, arts, movies in the park, skating, and the diversity that comes from living in a city. So the next time someone asks you, why should I move to Hartford? The answer is because Hartford is where you feel connected to new ideas. It has the faster pace of urban living, but the intimacy of a small city. In Hartford, people's ideas have real impact.
when I became mayor, I inherited an office that was scarred by corruption. We were in the middle of the worst economic crisis since the world, worst depression. Businesses had packed up and were moving out of the city. Unemployment was climbing. The country was bleeding. It was bleeding its jobs and we were bleeding right along with it. And yet, we are here today still standing and thriving. But our job is not yet finished. None of the issues I brought forth tonight have easy solutions. But we're here not to do what is easy. We are here to do what is necessary. In order to become one of America's best capital cities, we're going to have to employ some of the strategies that got us to where we are today. Cooperation, leadership, fearlessness, and focus. We have stayed focused on improving safety, creating jobs, improving education and quality of life, but we do have to make our city government more efficient, invest in our own people, and not place additional burdens on our businesses. We're going to have to work really hard to make this vision a reality. We can choose to be cynical, to be doubtful, we can choose to point fingers at each other instead of pointing fingers at solutions, but let's rise above all of that. As public servants, we have the power and the influence. Let's use that constructively to make this a greater city. I learned a valuable lesson this year, and that is that we have a valiant community. We have real life heroes here in Hartford. Two of them are here with us this evening. 17-year-old Antoine Tully, who saved each and every one of her seven siblings through a window from a fire from her home. Please stand, Antoine, if you're here. I think, of, I think of Christopher Brown, who entered at 16 years of age, entered a building, a burning building, to rescue his mother. And their neighbor, Lamont Coleman, who then carried her to safety. You here, Lamont? Christopher, are you here? Christopher? Their courage should be our inspiration. We owe it to them and all the people of Hartford to put the people of Hartford, the people of this great city, to put them first. I know that everyone sitting here loves this city and wants to see it succeed. Our ability to lift each other, even in the most desperate of moments, is part of the reason that we will become one of America's best capital cities. Estamos listos para ser la mejor ciudad capitalina de los Estados Unidos. God bless you. God bless Connecticut. God bless the people of the great city of Hartford. <laughs>